What's up everybody, it's your boy Nate. I'm super excited because AI rendering is finally here in Blender. Rendering is considered one of those final stages that can take a dull looking scene and bring it to life. Now we've talked about Blender's built-in rendering system, Cycles and Eevee, but this new renderer is freakishly good and I mean it is insane. This add-on can take something that looks super rough and turn it into this all without leaving the software. So if you guys are interested in what an AI renderer can do for you, you're gonna wanna stick around until the end of this video because oh my goodness, things get pretty crazy. I'm super excited, I know you are too. All right, let's go. You may be wondering, why would I ever need an AI renderer? Well, not only is it freaking awesome, but it can literally make something that looks like garbage into something that's pretty cool. Also, it's completely free. So to get this add-on for Blender, all you have to do is go over to Blender Market, check out and hit download. Install it like you would any other add-on for Blender, going all the way up to your preferences, clicking add-ons, and then picking that zip file. Now, there's one little step that requires you to sign into an account just to get an API key, but this takes like two seconds and then all you have to do is copy and paste that API key and you're pretty much good to go. Now on to making something. So surprisingly, you don't have to be a blender god in order to make something that looks pretty dang good using this add-on. I'm literally just going to be using primitives and bam, I'm done here. Yeah, just this box and this plane, this box and this plane, that, that's all I need. The cool thing about AI rendering is that you don't need a ton of details. I can actually have something blocked out super rough like I'm making something in Minecraft or Roblox. So the only thing that I need to do to get this AI to work is go ahead and set a material for each of these objects. That way it knows what's an object and what's not an object. And then I just need to actually type in what I want it to do. So if I want this cube and this plane to actually be a box on the ground, I just have to type in a box on the ground and bam, that, that's really it. <laughs> I'll get to kick back, you know, relax, and let the AI do the, the work for me, because that's what AI is for, all right? It's for doing all the hard stuff. But you may have already noticed that this is a little bit too easy, and if we want to overcomplicate things, we can actually go ahead into the style settings and pick a style. Uh, okay, I guess that wasn't too complicated. I can select from something that looks super highly detailed to something that looks like Picasso painted it, or even to something that looks like it was from Cartoon Network, back when Cartoon Network was still a thing. Oh man, I'm getting old. Okay, so I'm gonna pick this style. When I go ahead and I hit render, bam, you may notice this does not look like anything more than garbage, but give it like two seconds and all of a sudden it's gonna change because the AI is gonna take that image, then run it through its AI goodness and then pop out this image instead. So just like that, we have a pretty okay looking scene. I think this will look a lot better though if I add in a couple more primitives. So let me just add in this monkey head and and I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it a couple times and then pop in a couple extra monkey heads. And then rather than modeling a whole forest or background, I'm just gonna use this torus, scale it up and then put it out there in the background. And I think that should be good enough. Let me tell it now, monkey head in the jungle on a box or, or some sort of arrangement of those words. I'm gonna say it's a monkey. And let's see if this AI can actually turn it into something that looks like a monkey. Bam, okay, so I think this looks super cool. I'm already excited to see what else I can mess around with. After playing around with this AI with a couple different scenarios, I was super blown away. But remember when I said that things were gonna get a whole lot crazier, they're getting a whole lot crazier right now. So we can take that image that we generated using Blender and we can actually create variations of that image. So we can use an AI generated image to create another AI generated image. So this is just levels of like creative AI tools just getting layered up here because we can honestly generate an infinite amount of results. We can even change the styles of these, make all sorts of really interesting stuff. And the best part about this is that all of these results actually look pretty impressive. So not only did this save us a lot of time, but I'm pretty sure if you guys are creatives, you can already see a huge potential in being able to actually use a creative AI tool right within Blender. But we're not done yet because there's actually something else that's really cool about using this AI is that once you get into adding in a bunch more details and making your prompts a little bit more specific, you take your renders to a 
whole nother level. So already they were like, you know, top tier level here, but then bam, it just gets elevated even higher. Okay, so that was pretty awesome. Now you may have noticed that I've been only talking about all of the positive stuff about this AI tool. And that's because 90% of my experience with this has been pretty positive. But then after messing around a little bit further and trying to make a rendered animation rather than just a bunch of still images and concept art, I ran into a little roadblock in which I realized this does not actually work that well for that. So it actually looks like it's just rendering out that animation without any sort of AI processing on it. So I'm hoping that the the developers are actually already working on this and maybe it's not such a drastic step to go from a still image to an animation which is essentially just a series of still images. I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for that and once I find out you can bet your ass that there's going to be a video about it. I hope you guys have fun creating with this add-on and of course the links are going to be down in that description box. Another thing that you're going to notice about that description box is that we're going to have a link to our brand spanking new discord. We created it for you guys the community of creatives that way we can all pull together our resources talk about some of the awesome projects that we're working on or just shoot the shit and have fun while we're making different stuff so yeah that discord link down in the bottom go ahead and join if i'm on while you guys join you're probably gonna get a hello from me i want to send a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed you guys don't know already about 80 percent of the people watching this channel have never subscribed so if you're one of the few people who has not subscribed Subscribed. I don't know why you haven't done it, all right? It's literally free. It's just one click of that button. And not only that, but you're gonna get more free videos once you hit that subscribe button. So go ahead and do that. And I also wanna thank everyone who has already subscribed. You guys are getting us that much closer to our goal of hitting 500,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Holy crap, yo. I think we only have like two more months left. So I'm really hoping that you guys come through. Pull pull through for us, all right? Like, I, I know we can do it, but it's only if you guys subscribe. And Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace! Okay, who has noticed the new pop socket? I've had my old pop socket for about four years. It was garbage. If you go back to the old videos, check it out. Take a look at how terrible that was, and bam, now we got a YouTube one. Thank you, YouTube, for a YouTube pop socket. Anyways, let me just hop right into this video.